Hi, this is Munson with Munson Music, and we're going to talk about how you can play a song called You're Gonna Lose That Girl by the Beatles. And we're going to start off with kind of our main chorus progression on an E major chord. And when you play E major, first finger goes to the G on the first fret, second finger on the A string, second fret, and third finger on the D string, second fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds an E major chord, and it sounds really, really happy. And then from the E major, we're going to be going to a C sharp minor chord. Normally, you do this as a fourth fret bar, second finger on the B string, fifth fret, third finger on the D 6th fret, pinky on the G string 6th fret, and if you strum all those together, that sounds a C sharp minor chord that sounds really, really sad. Now you may also want to think about lifting off the pinky and making that a C sharp minor 7, that can make it sound a little bit more jazzy. And then from the C sharp minor, we go into an F sharp minor chord, and we do this as a 2nd fret bar, third finger on the A string on the 4th fret, pinky on the D string 4th fret, and if you strum all those together, that sounds an F sharp minor, it sounds really sad. You may also want to think about lifting off the, the pinky and making that an F sharp minor 7. Or it can also be cool to take the pinky and add it on the B string on the 5th fret for an F sharp minor 7. And then from there we go to a B7 chord. And if you're digging on the bars, you could do this as a 2nd fret bar. With 3rd finger on the D 4th fret, pinky on the B string 4th fret. And kind of work that for a B7 chord. Or another way to play B7 would be doing 1st finger on the D string 1st fret. 2nd finger on the A string 2nd fret. 3rd finger on the G 2nd and the pinky on the high E 2nd fret. And if you strum the A string to the high E string, that sounds a B7 chord and it sounds really, really kind of messed up. Um, now you may also want to take a, think about taking the 3rd finger and flatten it over the G, B, and E. And that would make a B9 chord if you kind of dig on that. For that. And on the chorus, actually, there's a couple different strumming options. You could kind of work this as kind of a down count. Kind of an E, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, C sharp minor. Minor, B7 on that chorus part. Or one of my favorite strum patterns for a 4 4 like this is down, down, up, up, down, up. So you took the E and tried that a lot. You'd have down, 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 down. So you tried that through the chorus, you'd have the E, down, down, C sharp minor. into our first verse and we start out on the E major but then we go to a G sharp 7 chord and normally you do this as a fourth fret bar second finger on the G string on the fifth fret third finger on the A string on the sixth fret and if you strum all those together that sounds a G sharp 7 it sounds kind of messed up and then from the G sharp 7 we go to our F sharp minor and then we go to our B7 at the very end of B9 so we tried our verse with our strumming we had to have the E Sharp seven, sharp Thing I think about adding the song though is bass notes, and a lot of times on that first down of the down, down, up, up, down, up, or the down, up, down, up, up, down, up, you can throw in a bass note for the chord. So on the E, you'd have the low E for the bass. On the C sharp minor, you'd have the A for your bass. On the F sharp minor, you'd have low E for the bass. And on the B7, you'd have the A for the bass. And on the G sharp 7, you'd have the low E for the bass. So we tried our next chorus with basses. We'd have the E. Sharp minor, F sharp minor, seven. And then from there, we'll be going back into our verse. So we tried that with basses. We'd have the E, G sharp seven, F sharp minor.
bridge part. It's almost like a tail or a chorus tag to the chorus, where we go back to our F sharp minor chord, but then we go to a D major chord. You may play D major. First finger goes to the G on the second fret, second finger on the high E second fret, and third finger on the B string third fret. And if you strum the D string to the high E string, that sounds a D major chord that sounds really, really happy. And around D's in general, it can also be kind of cool to lift off the second finger and make that a D sus too or add in the pinky on the high E third for a D suspended chord to kind of say some things around D chords. And then from the D we go to a G major chord. We play G major. First finger goes to A on the second fret, second finger on the low E string third fret, and third finger on the high E string third fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds a G major chord and it sounds really happy. Now you may also want to think about putting the third finger on the B string third, pinky on the high E third. Kind of working that for your G. And then you can make the change uh, that we're going into a little bit easier. So we're from the G, we go to a C major chord. And normally you do this first finger on the B string, first fret, second finger on the D, second fret, third finger on the A, third fret. And if you strum the A string to the high E string, that sounds a C major chord and it sounds really happy. And while you're around C's in general, it can be kind of cool to lift off the first finger, make that a C major 7, or you could add in the pinky on the B string, third fret, or C major 9, kind of say some things around C's, or another way to play C major 9 is to do first finger on the D second, second finger on the A string third, third finger on the B string third, and the pinky on the high E third. Kind of working a C major nine. And that may make that change a little bit easier from the G major chord to the C major chord, and then back to the G major chord. And then we do some more of the G, and then we go to a C major chord, and then we go to an F major chord. And normally you do this as a first fret bar, second finger on the G string second fret, third finger on the A string third fret, and the pinky on the D string third fret. And if you strum all those together, it sounds an F major chord and it sounds really happy. And I could substitute for that, that it can be an F major seven, where you do the first finger on the B string first fret, second finger on the G second, third finger on the D string third. And if you strum the D string to the high E string, that sounds an F major seven chord, which could be a little bit easier if you want to try and avoid the bar. So this, that would be very hard in this too. Um, so if we, if we tried our, our bridge part, with our strumming, we'd have our F sharp minor D to kind of set us up and into the G.
first finger goes to the D on the second fret, the second finger on the G second fret, and the third finger on the B string second fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds an A major chord and it sounds really, really happy. At the very end of that, it's almost like you half the D and the A. So you may want to do just a down, down on each of those chords before we kind of end on a big E major. So through that last outro, oh, and if you want to throw in basses actually on the A, you'd have the A string for this. So we tried that last outro chorus with, with basses, we'd have the E. That's the basics of how you can strum through. You're going to lose that girl by the Beatles. Good luck.